President Cyril Ramaphosa will this morning open the second Green Hydrogen Summit South Africa taking place in Cape Town. The summit takes place as the country battles rolling blackouts. Green Hydrogen is set to have the potential to support the expansion of the electricity transmission infrastructure to add additional renewable energy generation capacity and to support the local development of renewable energy. For more on this story, we cross live to SABC News reporter Diabo Seto. Diabo, a good morning to you. A very important summit taking place here, one that could have massive impact on our economy. Shirley, what are you hearing from the summit this morning? Good morning, that lady. Yes, a very important summit indeed taking place here in Cape Town, particularly uh, as we are uh, transitioning or talking about transitions. We're talking about cleaner uh, sources of fuel energy. Uh, energy. Uh, one of those, of course, being hydrogen. South Africa is not the only country that is looking to this technology to be able to uh, produce a cleaner fuel that could, you know, fuel industries and um, even uh, automobile sector. Um, uh, countries like Egypt, countries like Djibouti, um, uh, I think around July, I was in, in Dubai and they're also talking green hydrogen. Uh, of course, government is making sure that the department concerned, which is the Department of Science and Innovation, is also you know, having a strong hand and participating and also uh, making sure that they have a say in the technologies that will eventually help us to see this technology come to fruition. I've invited the uh, uh, Director General of the Department, Mr. Film Joacha, to come and uh, chat to us about what the department is uh, doing, what kind of technologies are there, and how we can see, and when we can see this technology come to fruition. Uh, Dr. Mjoka, thank you so much for making time to speak to us here at the SABC News Channel. Please just educate us firstly about the process, the electrolysis process, so that our viewers at home uh, uh, really have a deep and cleaner understanding of how hydrogen uh, happens. You know, thank you very much for giving the Department of Science and Innovation an opportunity. Uh, we are standing here in a stand of uh, work that has been done by three centers of competence that we've invested in since 2007. But we'll come back to that later on. So what you see here are two renewable energy sources. So this is where it starts. Yes, so you have solar panels and you've got wind, right? So this produces energy and then it goes into an electrolysis process. This is where you take water, H2O, and split it into hydrogen and oxygen. Right? That's where you get your hydrogen. Now, once you have your hydrogen, you can compress it because it's got to exist in a compressed state or you can carry it to whichever industry that you want. Because it's gas, obviously. Yes. So this is where it's compressed. This is a carrier which we call LOHC, uh, which then takes that uh, uh, hydrogen to industrial applications, as you can see. We've got, yes, so these are possible industrial applications, as you can see, or you can take it into mobility, so this is where it goes into cars, or you can put it as a, an energy storage and possibly export. So all of this, as you can see, there is mobility, which is a car, that's where you do your refueling, that's a truck, and this is industrial application. So you, you start with the energy, cheap energy from the sun, you then take water, you split it into hydrogen and oxygen, you store, you carry it, and then you take it to whatever component uh, of application you're looking for. Now, coming back to uh, the three centers that we established, one is based at UCT, and its job is to produce something which we call a catalyst. Now, a catalyst is basically something that increases the energy, sorry, the ability for a reaction to happen. So what they have done is they have used platinum uh, to then produce a membrane where you then you put the platinum. So when you get your water and split it into hydrogen and oxygen, it is actually that platinum uh, catalyst that helps you to do that. So all what you see then there uh, is then w w what produces what we call the stack. So you have a number of stacks that you produce that determines how much electricity you'll be able to generate. And then you can see other 
uh, partners that we work with, the LOHC and the Compress, which is the energy storage that is done by the Northwest University and the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Now, when you've done all of this, you then have to put it into components of fuel cells, uh, whether it's in mobility, as we indicated earlier on, or storage. This is done by the University of the Western Cape. So all what you see here are not only just research activities, but components of products that are already in fuel cells that we've been deploying. One of the things that uh, we do know that will be happening today is the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between three provinces, the Northern Cape, Eastern Cape, Western Cape. Educate us on why these provinces are key. And we'll also be uh, having an announcement, particularly with developing or, or announcing about the development of the uh, green hydrogen strategy for the country and national hydrogen. But firstly, educate us about these provinces and their significance. Well, the Northern Cape, as you know, has got the largest intensity of the sun. So we talked earlier on about using solar panels to split water through the electrolyzer, so uh, that is important. But they also have a project in Priska, where together with the German government, they are looking at uh, producing electrolyzers that you need for, as we talked earlier on, splitting your water. So they are involved. And then the Eastern Cape, uh, they are responsible and they are working on a strategy to produce ammonia uh, from green hydrogen. So that's why it is important. And they also have a harbor. Uh, and then the Northern Cape also has uh, a number of areas where they want to develop activities in the hydrogen. And therefore, with some partners, uh, they are looking at uh, this uh, memorandum of understanding to do this work. And as um, I did ask earlier about the, the importance of having a national strategy because this is something that needs to be um, uh, penciled in into policy as, as it were as we try to, to, to chart a just energy transition um, and, and also factoring in cleaner and renewable more and more renewable energy. We already have strategies. We have a hydrogen society roadmap that uh, cabinet approved in 2021. We have a green hydrogen commercialization strategy which is led by the DTIC. So the strategies are there. All what we would like to do now is to set up a coordination structure uh, because if you look at uh, what came out of the Hydrogen Society Roadmap, they talked about the decarbonization of transport. So the Department of Transport is, is, is responsible for that. You're talking about green buildings. So that is the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. You talk about heavy industries producing green steel. That is the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition. And then, of course, the energy production. That's the Department of Mineral... So it's basically being under one uh, Exactly. So that you can then have a, a, an overview of what each of the department that has the responsibility of implementing the Hydrogen Society Roadmap is and will be doing in the next 10 years. Dr. Mchokha, thank you so much. Um, I'll be catching up with you throughout the day just to find out what's been happening. Now, lady, there you have it. Um, Dr. Mchokha has given us a good understanding of where this all starts and where it ends and in which industries are likely to uh, benefit from green hydrogen. As I said, in just a few minutes, we're expecting the program to officially get underway. And thereafter, we're going to have a little lots of side panels. And also, we're going to have the signing of the memorandum of the three provinces, Northern Cape, Eastern Cape, and uh, Western Cape. We're also going to have another signing of memorandum between Sasol and um, uh, Sasol as well as uh, the Anglo-American and I think one other company, they're also going to be signing because the participation, obviously, of the private sector is also important. And one of the things that will be discussed here will be the public-private partnership as uh, the, the, the green industry or the green hydrogen industry is developed. Let me uh, hold it from here for here, from for now, and I will be catching you up with uh, our SAPC viewers throughout the day, just giving them updates, uh, but please don't go away as we prepare uh, to hear from the President as he officially gives a keynote address of the uh, second South African Green Hydrogen Summit taking place here in Cape Town.